Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for tuning in to the first episode of Topical Finasteride series I decided to make for strictly educational purposes. After not only trying Topical Finasteride for like six months, but also by doing some research on this compound prior and even after I stopped using it. This video has been brought to you by GoFiber. Enter your pictures and win a one year supply of GoFiber. It's easy to enter. Order a free sample, take a clear before and after pictures and send them to selfie at gofiber.com. So let's get straight to the point and here is the first misconception right away that people get wrong about topical finasteride and something I believed too before I started with it. So the belief is that topical finasteride is a more side effect free version of oral finasteride one milligram. Now that's not entirely true and it will be heavily dose dependent. Although topical finasteride was originally developed to become a more side effect free version of oral finasteride, unfortunately it hasn't become it yet. And let me explain you why most of the topical finasteride options available online or compounded by pharmacists nowadays are still going to affect your DHT systemically. First important thing you need to be aware of if you want to use topical finasteride for your androgenic alopecia is that topical finasteride does go systemic. This this has been already confirmed in more than one study by now. In this clinical study, for example, they were comparing the effects of oral finasteride 1 mg and topical finasteride 0.25% on systemic DHT level inhibition. 0.25% means, by the way, 2.5 mg of finasteride equivalent per 1 ml of liquid. Here's an example. Maybe you are in Norwood 2 and you have receding temples and you want to somehow preserve it or even bring your hairline back to Norwood 1. At least you want to try it. May, may not work. So you apply this topical finasteride 0.25% solution, only 1 ml of it, on your temples. Okay? If it gets absorbed completely, it, it is as if you would ingest 2.5 milligrams of oral uh, finasteride equivalent. Of course, under the assumption that the whole one milliliter of this liquid that you just applied will be perfectly absorbed, which is not going to be the case, of course. But what I want to say is that 0.25% topical finasteride is a still hell of a high concentration. Now back to the study. The systemic DHT inhibition of topical finasteride 0.25% solution was not only comparable to the 70% DHT inhibition caused by oral finasteride, as many of you already know, it seemed that topical finasteride was even able to slightly exceed the plasma DHT suppression and block the DHT by as much as 75 to 80%. And yes, systemically, okay? And interestingly, by applying only 0.1 milliliter of this 0.25% solution, this clinical study was able to observe a lower, but still a pretty notable serum DHT suppression of 24 to 26% after one week of daily topical application. This would be an equivalent of 0.25 milligram oral finasteride per amount of vehicle, making it not 0.25%, but rather 0.025% solution. But I will talk more about the microdosing of topical finasteride in the second episode of this series, as I don't want to overflow you with too much information. Now, topical finasteride generally needs more time before it reaches its maximum concentration in blood serum compared to oral finasteride. That's why we can observe a stronger DHT suppression 12 hours after the topical finasteride application compared to 6 hours after the application, okay? Also by looking onto this study, we can see that the DHT suppression of topical finasteride actually improves slightly between the 12th and 24th hour after the application, while by, by oral finasteride the, the DHT suppression starts decreasing from the 12th hour and by the 24th hour there is like a 15% decrease in the ability to suppress systemic DHT with oral finasteride tablet. So that's also the reason why I don't use them together. Like I wouldn't suggest to use, you use them together, oral and topical finasteride, because many guys have been asking me about combining both together 
but I don't suggest it unless you really know what you're doing. I have also seen Mike Thurston, the bodybuilder, using topical finasteride together with Propecia, one milligram tablets, in one of his hair transplant updates, which again, I don't think it's necessary and you won't get more benefits from doing that. Especially if you are the guy who wants to also minimize the side effects from either, either of those, okay? So please don't use them together because that way you are in fact unnecessarily prolonging finasteride, finasteride plasma exposure. On one hand, you have oral finasteride which causes pretty fast permeation into blood plasma. And on the other hand, you have topical finasteride which has a slower but more sustaining permeation into blood plasma. Now, let's take a look at how topical and oral finasteride are able to suppress the scalp DHT. Which one do you think will inhibit this, the scalp DHT better? You guessed it, it's topical one. We know that type 2 5-alpha reductase is being predominantly expressed in the hair follicle and by effectively inhibiting it, either with topical or oral 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, there will be less DHT in the scalp. Well, in the same study discussed before, they compared 1 milligram oral finasteride, topical finasteride 0.25% once a day, and topical finasteride 0.25% twice a day. And surprisingly, the best DHT inhibition in the scalp has been achieved by once a day topical finasteride application. More precisely, 71.2% DHT reduction in the scalp, followed by 51.1% DHT reduction in the scalp with oral finasteride one milligram and lastly 47.2% DHT reduction on the scalp with topical finasteride twice a day application. Now the surprising difference in the clinical response between the once a day and twice a day 0.25% topical finasteride regimens with respect to scalp DHT reduction is supposed to be because of the nature of the topical formulation containing a film forming agent hydroxypropyl chitosan which forms an elastic smooth and almost invisible film on the scalp surface after you apply it and it seems to alter the finasteride release pattern from the film. The now, previous non-clinical studies in hairless rat skin showed that after application of the film-forming topical finasteride solution, finasteride permeated through the rat skin with total permeated drug corresponding to only 3.7% of the applied dose. So you can see that the permeation through the skin is pretty slow with the topical finasteride. And that's the reason why transdermal penetration can last for at least 24 hours post-dose with topical finasteride. All right guys, so let me just wrap it up for you now. Topical finasteride does go systemically as well, but how much DHT will be suppressed in your plasma as a result of applying topical finasteride on your scalp will depend on topical finasteride concentration. Furthermore, topical finasteride is able to inhibit DHT more efficiently on the scalp as opposed to oral finasteride after one week of daily use. More precisely, 70% with the topical one and 50% scalp DHT reduction with the oral tablet. I say after one week because that's the treatment period of this clinical study and this study I consider to be pretty reliable. Uh, there's obviously going to be a cumulative effect with oral finasteride long term. So if you take it uh, for weeks and months, it means that even finasteride oral will be able to sufficiently inhibit or suppress the DHT in the scalp. But there are some studies who found out it was about 70% in the scalp as well. This means that even though finasteride oral may not be as effective initially in blocking DHT on the scalp, uh, long term together with topical finasteride, they should have very similar ability to suppress DHT on the scalp. Guys, in the next episode, we'll be talking about the ideal and scientifically backed concentration of topical finasteride for treating androgenic alopecia based on the second part of today's clinical study I was presenting to you. Okay, it's a really important study. I will be, second, I will be also discussing microdosing topical finasteride and how to potentially combine it with other solvents by making a homemade version of it, okay? So uh, yeah, that was it my friends. If you want to support my channel, make sure you like this video or reward this content with uh, a comment below, which is greatly appreciated. And for all of you interested in a hair transplant or considering it, wondering, damn, there is so much choice out there. How can I make a well-informed decision in 2020? Well, you can do so if you apply for a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me. It's designed to give you 
all the essential knowledge you need to know and things you have to do before your hair transplant in one call, okay? And don't worry, it's not gonna be like overwhelming. You get a summary from me after the call is over so you know what are the things you need to focus on the most after it's over, okay? So either talk to you soon or see you soon in another video. Cheers.